So hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We've got a fine little biscuit recipe for you today. Maybe you've tried this before, maybe you haven't, but I'm telling you, you need to try it. It's great. Okay, so first things first. Yes, this is all that we have left of a dozen cookies yesterday. I actually hid them. I'm surprised there's any of these left. A gal sent me a quick little recipe yesterday to try on peanut butter cookies. And there's lots of different ways that you can make peanut butter cookies. I love peanut butter cookies. Yes, yes, yes. And this is only three ingredients. So I'm not going to make a full video on this, but I want to pass it along to you before we get on making these beautiful little biscuits, biscuit roll type things. Uh, so what I did was take a cup of peanut butter. You can make it crunchy peanut butter too if you want. That would be delicious. Then you take one egg and one cup of sugar. That's it. Mix them up. Mix them, mix them, mix up. Then you take your little, um, you, whatever, cookie sheet. I actually greased mine a little bit. I put a spray on it, but you don't have to per the recipe. And you just do one little dollop on there. And then you take a fork and then you just mash them down and make your marks. Make sure you have some water though, so it doesn't stick. So you keep wetting the fork. And then I bake these at 350. Um, she said 10 to 12 minutes, but mine actually cooked for about 15. And then take them out, let them cool. I will tell you they're better even, they're better the next day. Like they are so rich and it's so great to let them sit and they're just wonderful. So if you like peanut butter cookies and you just want to use three ingredients, again, one cup sugar, one cup peanut butter, and one beautiful egg. 350, 10 to 15 minutes or so, you eyeball it, you do what you got to do. Cookies. And it made about a dozen. So this is a great little deal. Now, let's get started. So, I had never, ever, ever heard of what I'm about to show you until like, I don't know, two weeks ago. And I tested it and I tried it and I was blown away. It, it is actually a little thing that I would say is a cross between a traditional biscuit and a Sister Schubert roll. Do you know what I'm talking about when you go to the grocery store? By the way, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I am so rude, I'm so sorry. Welcome back to the channel. But listen, so if you go to the frozen section where like the rolls and things are, everybody's had Sister Schubert rolls at some point. You know, it's in the tin pan and it's kind of like a pull apart. The way that I made these, this is kind of how they turned out in terms of look, but also kind of in flavor too. Do you want to know the secret ingredient? Cream cheese, baby. Cream cheese. I know. I'm just getting blown away all the time. I said, Nana, have you ever th made biscuits with cream cheese in them? And she was like, what? I mean, <laughs> we're coming up with all kinds of neat things and seeing all kinds of neat recipes. And you guys are sending me some stuff too. But this is important. Let me tell you why. And then we're going to get started. Today, I'm making my potato soup. I have, a, I have like two or three different videos on different versions of homemade, quick and easy, crock pot potato soup. I make them with frozen potatoes. I mean, this takes like five minutes to throw together and it cooks all day. Well, about an hour or two before you eat the soup with your yummy rolls or whatever you like, you put cream cheese in it. So my theory is what I'm going to do is take a pinch off of the um, cream cheese here that I already have, right? Um, and go to make the, my little biscuits over here as I'm calling them. The rest of it's going in my soup. I really think this worked out well because so what I'm trying to tell you is I've waited to make this video on this day because I'm going to pair these little sister, sister Schuberty biscuits <laughs> made with cream cheese with the soup. So how do I make them? Let's go. So for this recipe, by the way, there is a bakery. I'll have to find it, put the name on there. I saw it floating through on Facebook. This is where I got the idea for the recipe. I saw it on Facebook um, through White Lily. And you know, I'm a big White Lily fan. I love their self-rising flour. So that's where this came from. So there's actually like this bakery and she makes massive amounts of these biscuits and she added cream cheese to them and they're beautiful biscuits. And I was curious to how that would taste because I love cream cheese. And I'm telling you, it's really edgy and really nice. But here's the, here's all you need, okay? So self-rising flour. Again, as I have said on many videos, you can make your own self-rising flour. It's not rocket science, okay? So if you want to make your own traditional deal there because you use plain flour, that's okay. But you will want to make it a self-rising situation, okay? You want to rise to the occasion, right? The next thing that you're going to need is butter. I'm using Kerrygold because I love it and I have several bits of it in my freezer. 
that I got a while ago. So we're going to be using, we're trying to use it up, okay? Uh, so butter, don't forget your Philly cheese. Now it's only about a fourth of it, so you're not going to use the whole thing. So that's why I'm saying I'm only taking a pinch off of this. So I'm going to use the rest for my soup. See how that works? So good. It, I love it. I love it when things come together. Now the recipe calls for buttermilk. I don't buy buttermilk at the store. I think it's nasty. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. So when I have a recipe that um, calls for buttermilk, I make my own clabbered milk. I take a cup of milk uh, and then I add a couple of splashes of white vinegar, let it sit for a few minutes. It clappers up. It works beautiful. I love buttermilk from my cow. I just don't like it from the store. I, once you have the real thing, girl, you don't want that stuff from the store. So this is what I'm saying. I cheat, but it worked great. I've also considered trying out um, using heavy whipping cream. That would be something neat to try. If you do it that way with the self-rising flour, let me know how that turns out because I am a little curious. But we're going to stick with the traditional, original uh, ingredients and recipe as close as possible, and we're going to see how it turns out. Now, you can use whatever you want, whatever you've got. I'm use, I am used my cast iron skillet. This is the 10 and a quarter inch pan. You can use a griddle. I actually put quite a bit of butter in this, a little bit of butter at the bottom. So this, this works. And plus it kind of gives it that, I'm holding it like this. It kind of gives it that pull apart effect a little bit more as they uh, bake. Now, let me tell you this before we get started. Go set your oven at 450 degrees. Yes, let it get nice and steamy and hot and beautiful all up in that stove. 450 degrees for these little biscuits. Okay, so what I did is I've measured out just shy of a cup of regular, um, this is whole milk. I buy whole milk. If I have to buy it from the store, I do buy whole milk. I'm going to, this is the first thing that I'm going to do. Start preheating your oven, get it going. And then I'm going to make my clabbered milk. White vinegar into with milk. Uh, about a tablespoon or so. Don't sweat the small stuff. Just put it in there. Do this first so we can start setting up and clabbering. That's what you're wanting, okay? It's like a soured milk. Similar to buttermilk, but this is a good cheat. So I'm going to put this in the fridge while I get my flour ready because you want to keep your ingredients as cold as possible. So what we're going to do is make a mess. Just go ahead and uh, say that I'm going to make a mess. And don't wear a black uh, sweatshirt when you're doing this, but you know how that goes. Anyway, so I've got two cups of your self-rising flour and I prefer the unbleached. And what I'm going to do is sift it. I highly recommend you sift your flour for any of your biscuits and cookies and all those yummies. It really makes a difference. So I'm just going to um, Clearly sift it, and then we're going to add the cold stuff. I've also added into the stove top here my cast iron skillet to start heating it up because I want my butter inside of it to melt. Let's go. Okay, so this recipe calls for four tablespoons of butter. We're just going to wing it. I'll put the, everything will be, the specifics will be down in the bottom of the description. So I go and copy and paste my stuff, and then I type, always go to the bottom and type out the new stuff. So if you're always looking for a recipe, go to the bottom of the description. So I'm going to wing this, but it's technically four tablespoons. Ice cold. You can grate it if you want to. I'm just going to throw it in there in pieces, and then I'm going to um, just crumble it up, okay? Crumble it up, make it kind of like um, um, cornmeal-type texture. Then we're going to add the cream cheese. Do the butter first. Let's roll. Okay, we got a we got a boogaloo here, people. All right, can you see that? It's very crummy, crumbly. Okay, if if there's a piece of butter in there that's too big, I mean, who's gonna complain about that when they take that bite? Don't stress about that. Now I'm gonna cut off about a fourth of a block. You can see I've already got a fourth of a block gone. So what I'm gonna do is cut a fourth off. Put it in there, the same thing. Keep mixing it in, mix a, mix a, mix a. And then we're gonna add the clabbered milk. So we're gonna do this next. And then, real quick, we're gonna put butter in the cast iron skillet. See, the dogs already smell the biscuits. That's what you're hearing in the background. Live homestead action right here. This is the other half of the cream cheese going in the soup. This is going in the biscuit. Two cups self-rising flour. Then you've got your butter mixed in here, and now you're gonna get your hands in this now, and you're gonna further make a mess. Look at all the beautiful mess. This is what it really looks like, people. Dogs barking in the background, baby crying somewhere. 
whatever, and I'm gonna mix the cream cheese in, okay? Kind of makes more of a wettish dough. You'll see um, when I add the uh, liquid. So what I'm gonna end up doing is literally dropping these biscuits. I'm not gonna roll them out. I'm gonna hand roll them and I'm gonna put them in my hot Lodge cast iron skillet that's got a lot of pretty butter floating around. Okay, so now you get a closer look at the texture that's with the butter and the cream cheese. There's the milk. I want you to see this. This is why I want you to, uh... so this has been sitting for a few minutes. I put it back in the fridge actually to keep it nice and cold, but you see all that clabber? That's what I'm talking about. So this makes, in my opinion, a very wet dough. You could probably back off the liquid, meaning the milk, maybe back it off to a half to a three quarters or something. If you want to make it a little less sticky, I don't. I'm just gonna flour it, I'm gonna roll them, and I'm gonna plop them. I didn't make a big deal about it, and they turned out great. These are my son's, my middle boy, my, I call him my boy, my middle son's favorite biscuits that I've ever made. He thought they were the best. So don't sweat all the mess. Just throw it in the pan. Okay, I made a mess. Here's the deal. I want you to see this. We're gonna pop them into the oven, 450, ready to go. So I have 11 drop biscuits. Now, if you prefer to do what I said earlier, cut back the liquid and cut them. If you wanna pour butter on top of them, whatever you want to do, you can do that. So we're gonna put them in the oven at 450 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes, just to eyeball it. Let's see how they turn out. I'm excited and we'll get everything cleaned up. That'll be a miracle. <laughs> All right, fresh out of the oven, super heavy, super hot, okay? So we have, I think we have 11 of these pull-apart biscuits ready to go. Aren't they beautiful? I know it, I put a little bit of butter on top. So I will tell you, I mean, it's a biscuit, but it kind of reminds you of those wonderful Sister Schubert rolls and the cream cheese is all the magic up in there. Try it out, see what you think, change it up, do what works best for you. Let me know, guys, it's time to eat and we will see you on the next video. Make sure you share this. Oh, I gotta set this down.